We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. We're able to get our shot off onto the Morgan who's transformed into the Changa. We're able to get a pick. We're gonna keep rotating in. We already have a spirit bomb here or a world weave. We're gonna fire our one at the Loki. We're able to get ourselves a double kill. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request by Neath as Carrie. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I already played with the intentions of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. As always, the full build is in the description down below. If you are a returning viewer, Neath I feel like is the most basic character in Smite. She's the first hunter that people play and I feel like a lot of people play a lot of Neath as they're getting into the game. She can be good. She has a global ultimate which is always going to get some use. However, she is a little bit limited in her kit. So let's go ahead and go over her kit. Neath's one, spirit arrow. Neath's gonna fire a shot that passes through everything. Each enemy hit takes damage and is rooted. If the spear arrow hits a broken weave, the weave detonates, dealing an additional 100% of the damage and applying the root to all enemies in the area. The root duration is 1.2 seconds at level 1, 2 seconds at level 5. Neath's 2, Unravel. Neath is going to unravel the world weaves, damaging all enemies in the area, reducing their attack speed while increasing her own, and healing Neath for each enemy hit up to 3. Any broken weaves in the area are removed, healing Neath an additional amount. The attack speed buff debuff is 30% and the debuff buff lifetime is 4 seconds. Knees 3. Backflip. Neath's going to backflip through the air creating a broken weave as she leaps while damaging and slowing enemies in front of her. The slow is going to be 25% and the slow duration is going to be 2.5 seconds at level 1, 4.5 seconds at level 5. Neath's ultimate. World Weaver. Neath is going to charge up and fire an arrow across the world seeking its target through obstacles. Enemy gods take damage and are stunned. The arrow can be fired quicker for diminished results. The stun is going to be 1.5 seconds and you need to have vision on the enemy god to fire this ultimate. And finally, Neath's passive. A broken weave appears at the last location that each enemy god dies. The broken weave gives her ability secondary effects when she uses the broken weave. These weaves last for one minute. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1, we want to put a point to our 1, level 2, put a point to our 3, level 3, put a point to our 2, level 4, put another point to our 1. We want to max out our ultimate whenever we can, max out our 1, max out our 2, max out our 3. In terms of- oh, Loki's here, we're going to have to dip. It's going to backflip, we're in a little bit of trouble, we're going to use our Aegis to avoid the Jing Chan. And we're able to survive. Loki's still hanging around. Kali is rotating in. Looks like the action's over. Then Loki goes invisible. He's probably going to go for Kali. We're going to use our one, get the root, get some damage, use our backflip, and we're able to get the pick onto the Loki. In terms of our build, we started with Bluestone Pendant, tier 1 of Transcendence, and 2 health potions. We went with Aegis because we're going against the Izanami and a Loki. I think the two targets are kind of outweighing the beads that we would need for the Jing Chen. Bluestone Pendant is going to provide us 15 physical power, 20 HP 5, 10 MP 5, and it has a passive that enemies hit by your damaging abilities take an additional 25 damage over 2 seconds. This can stack up to 2 times. So Neath has 4 damaging abilities which makes her a great candidate for Bluestone Pendant. And we're going into Bluestone Pendant for that early game pressure. I really don't like the upgraded options for Bluestone, so we are going to be selling it later on in the build. We're going to go ahead and fall back for our purple. The magic number that we're looking for is 2,000 gold. That's going to allow us to upgrade Transcendence to the tier 3 and start stacking. Is ready. 
We're gonna go ahead and just focus the minion wave. Get our three off, get a little bit of blue stone damage onto the Jing Chen. We just hit level five. We see that enemies are over on Dan's Bora in solo. We're gonna go ahead and charge up our ultimate so it does the full damage. We're trying to hit the Loki. We get our shot off. It hits, but it looks like it wasn't enough to get the pick, or that shock was able to intercept it. So whenever we use our one and it connects to a weave, the weave is going to deal as much damage as the one. Meaning that if we can hit the enemy with the line attack and the weave detonation, we're going to be dealing two times the damage. If we have bluestone and transcendence fully stacked, that's going to be a lot of damage. We're getting pressured. Bacchus is in a little bit of trouble. We get a double root off. Anytime we land our two on somebody, we're going to be stealing some attack speed from them. We're going to go ahead, fall back, hit this lesser scorpion. Just trying to get as much gold and XP as possible. So we're about to have 2,000 gold. However, if we back now, we won't have enough money for potions. Ult's down in 12. If our ult was up, we probably would have been able to get that pick onto the Izanami. There was a window before Jing Chen was in lane. Kali and Bacchus are invading purple. We're gonna go ahead and hit the Harvey. Bacchus is getting a lot of last hits, so we're missing out on a little bit of gold. However, it's probably okay. We already have enough for the items that we want. We are not backing because we're not trying to miss any of this gold or XP. There's a whole wave right here. Kali uses her ultimate. Izanami is able to get the pick onto Kali. We get the root onto Izanami. We get our two off onto Izanami. We're out of mana, so we are going to start falling back. We're in a little bit of trouble right here. We do have our Aegis. Aegis shells, pretty huge. We're going to backflip out. And we're going to go ahead and back and pick up Transcendence. Transcendence is going to provide us 25 physical power, 300 mana, and 10 MP5. It has a passive that you permanently gain 15 mana per stack and receive 5 stacks for a kill on a god or one stack for a kill on a minion. This can stack up to 50 times. Once this item is fully evolved, 3% of your mana is going to be converted to physical power. At 50 stacks, this item evolves and also gains 10% additional cooldown reduction. So it's gonna give us plenty of mana. It has some MP5 on it, so we're gonna be recovering mana. It's just gonna give us a lot of power once we get it fully stacked. Transcendence is a great base to start going into an ability based build. However, we're going to get some power online with Transcendence and then start going into some attack speed, some crit, and kind of a basic attack build. It's a little bit of a hybrid, but this is how I like to build Neath. We tell Bacchus to go to mid. They are pressuring the Harpy. We make a misplay right here. We step in, we're like, yeah, we can contest this safely. We cannot contest this safely. We're gonna go down right here. We just overstepped. We did not need to challenge them while they're going for the Harpy, especially with Jing Chen creating that much space for the Izanami. We go down. That is a misplay from us. We do have a Chonge in mid, so there's a good chance that we'll win this late game. I also think we have more of a late game team comp than they do. We have Kali, we have Chonga, Bacchus is going to be a tank, and we have two hunters.
We're trying to peak enemy health. Keeps locking onto Jing Chen. We don't want to stay in our ultimate too long because we are missing minions because of it. We gotta charge up our ultimate. Enemy has been slain. Enemy ultimate down. Finding a new target. We're gonna fire it onto the Loki. Kali's able to clean up the Loki, so our ultimate just disappears. So if it is shot at a target that goes down before our ultimate gets there. An enemy has been Neath's slain. ultimate takes a minimal amount of skill. It's literally just look at a target and fire. Kind of like a new ultimate. It's almost free. This Izanami got level on us, so we are kind of playing it safe. We don't want to be too aggressive onto her. Bacchus is rotating over. We're going to have to use our one on the wave. Go ahead and fire our two. Our ultimate is down. We really just have our three right here. We are focused on trying to steal that Harpy. We're still with the Bacchus. Jing Chen rotates in. That's not good. We get some good damage off. We're going to go ahead and use our Aegis. We probably didn't need to do that. Thank goodness Chonga rotated in. We're going to go ahead and backflip out. Start running for it. We have two people chasing us whenever Chonga is still up there. So they are targeting us here. Chonga rotates back. Throws us a heal. And it looks like they give up on pressuring us. Loki is nearby, so we are going to be trying to play it pretty careful. Loki's going in onto that Chonga. We're just going to hit wave. We survived. That's the big thing right there. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate. We're able to... Get our shot off onto the Morgan, who's transformed into the Changa. We're able to get a pick. We're going to keep rotating in. We already have a Spirit Bomb here, or a World Weave. We're going to fire our one at the Loki. We're able to get ourselves a double kill. Jing Chan is probably going to be able to get out right here. We get our two off onto the Izanami. We miss our one on the minion, so we're just going to go ahead and fall back. She has two levels on us, which is super unfortunate. We do have enough money for our boost, but we don't want to back at a time where Izanami could take our purple and we'd be missing a minion wave. So we're going to go ahead and hit our purple, hit a minion wave, maybe even another minion wave, and then back. So the minions are already at our tier 2 tower, which means we just we would miss a minion wave if we back right now. We're going to try to get high pressure onto the Seasonami. She's kind of chunking us. We're going to go ahead and throw out our two. Get a little bit of a heal going on. Go ahead and clear the minion wave, and then we're going to go ahead and back. We're gonna pick up the attack speed boots. We're gonna pick up tier one of Breastplate of Valor. And then we're gonna pick up the tier two of Aussie. So this is where the build gets a little bit spicy. I realized this when going in solo lane against other solo laners who are doing this. But the tier one, the tier one version of Breastplate of Valor might be a little broken. It provides you 20 physical protections and it only costs 600 gold. So we're going against an Izanami who's a physical character and a Loki who's a physical jungler. Gaining 20 physical protections can really help it out. I believe we're going to be taking one... We're gonna, uh, it's going to reduce the damage we take by one sixth. If my math is correct. And it only costs us 600 gold. We're going to sell it later. But for this early game, whenever we're trading, 
it's going to be very, very helpful to have that 20 physical protections. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate onto the Izanami so Dan Zabor can get closer. We're able to force out her dash. Dan Zabor is going to chase. Dan Zabor is able to clean her up. So 20 physical protections is more than any starter item gives you, and most starter items run for 700 gold. So in terms of protections per cost, this item is broken. 20 physical protections, 600 gold. That's almost nothing for us. Loki's un unfortunately able to get the pick onto the Danzelvora. We're gonna go in. We miss our one, super unfortunate. We miss a couple of kills this game that we should have gotten. That was one of them. I'm going to go ahead and rotate in. Bacchus is able to get the pick, but he also goes down. Chalk's here, but guess what, Chalk? We have 20 physical protections. We're going to heal up a little bit. Jing Chen is also here. We're expecting an ultimate. He does not use it. We get the root onto Chalk. We're gonna hide under tower. Now we gotta fall back. We hit him with the two. That's gonna give us a little bit of a heal. Hit him with the three. Getting blue stone procs for each ability. We're gonna fire the one, get the root onto him. Teleports under tower. We're gonna keep landing basics. That's his ultimate. We're gonna use our Aegis to avoid the damage. Fire our two. Use our backflip. Our teammate is able to. Get some damage on a chalk. We ult him, stun him, and our Kali is able to clean him up. Izanami is now in a bad position. Our team rotates in and is able to get the pick onto the Izanami. So I feel like we played that really well. And I feel like if we didn't have the 20 physical protections from tier 1 of Breastplate, we would have gone down to that chalk. I think this is actually like really broken. The fact that you get 20 physical protections for 600 gold. Every other item gives you 10 and there are maybe one or two uh, physical starters or tier ones physical items that give you 15. But this is the only one that gives you 20. The more I think about it, the more I think that like it's just broken. They have to address this at some point. It's really annoying in solo lane because you're going against a physical character like 90% of the time. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. It does not get the pick onto the Morgan, but Dan Zabora is able to clean the Morgan up. Oh, if we didn't miss that, we're going to backflip, fire one. <laughs> we missed that too. We should have had that pick. Loki is nearby, so we're going to go ahead and just hide under tower. And we make it back to base in order to pick up Aussie. Aussie is going to provide us 15% physical lifesteal, 25% attack speed, and 10 flat penetration. It has passive that if you drop below 35% health, you're going to gain an additional 25% lifesteal for 5 seconds. This can only occur once every 15 seconds. Izanami is able to get a triple kill, unfortunately. We are able to secure the red, get a little bit of damage off. Now we're going to head back to lane. We did want to build Transcendence before going into the tier 1 of Breastplate of Valor. Transcendence is going to give us that power. It also allows us to start stacking earlier on in our build. We're going to go ahead and secure purple. It's 
still just trying to form up. I'm gonna go ahead and charge up our ultimate. They're both full health, so a stun I don't think will really be that useful. We're gonna start rotating over there. Does look like somebody got chunked. We see on the mini map that Chonga and Bacchus are closing in. So we might ult right here to get the stun so that way they can just get easy setup. We do get our ult off and we're able to get the pick onto the Jing Chen. Looks like there's three enemies over here. It's a 4v4. We don't know where Izanami is. They now have the advantage because they got the pick onto the Bacchus. We're going to go ahead and secure a little bit of farm so if they do push up, they won't be able to invade our jungle that much. Three people here. Izanami is pushing our left tower. Looks like we caught Chalk in the shop. We got a few free basics onto him. Right We're going to go ahead and start working on Wind Demon. I'm at an interesting dilemma for the thumbnail. Should I include the tier one of Breastplate of Valor? Where people look at that and be like, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Or will people look at it and be like, tier one of Breastplate, what? I need to click on this video. We will see. I have to make the thumbnail after so you guys will know before I have this conversation in the video. We're going to go ahead and rotate mid. We do have our ultimate. The Morgan is a good target for us. We're able to get the pick onto the Morgan. So now it looks like it's just the front line and Loki. Just Jing and Loki. They do unfortunately have two characters that can go invisible. Which makes it a little harder for us to hit our ultimate. We get some good damage off. I think we missed a basic attack. We should have had that pick right there. Izanami chunks. We did check her build. She is going into crit. We miss our one. So unfortunately, we cannot save Bacchus right there. Look, he comes onto us. Under tower. We get some good damage. He pops a shell. We fire one, that misses, and unfortunately we drop another kill. We do have enough money for one demon, so we're going to go ahead and pick that bad boy up. One demon is going to provide us 25 physical power, 20% attack speed, and 20% critical strike chance. It has a passive that your critical hits provide you with 10% physical penetration and increase your attack speed and movement speed by 20% for 5 seconds. This item is really strong right now and is going to be getting nerfed in this upcoming patch. Jing is over in the left, so we're going to pull back. We kind of want to hit the purple, but we're also going to play it super safe and just fall back because we lost vision of Loki. He could have been rotating on us, and we do not want to have to deal with him by herself. We're going to go ahead and hit the greater scorpion before dropping our purple. This is going to enhance our purple. So purple was providing us 10% increased attack speed. Now it's going to provide us 25% now that it's enhanced. The enemy team is able to secure the Pyromancer.
We're gonna go ahead and make our way mid. This is about to be a full team crash here. Minus the Kali who's down. Bacchus is able to get the pick onto the chalk. We do have our ultimate. Oh, nice sidestep by Jinkran. We get our two off. We're able to get the pick onto the Loki. The Morgan goes invisible. We're gonna fire our one. Unfortunately, we miss. We're gonna try to get some damage onto this the Morgan. We do have our ultimate. We're gonna go ahead and charge it up. Fire it at the Morgan. Unfortunately, Jing Tan is able to block it. We keep landing basics. We miss our one again. These Anami is able to clean up the Danzaboro. Danzaboro. Yeah, Danzaboro, not Danzabora. We're going to go ahead and take this tower. We're going to backflip to avoid the Izanami. We fire one, thinking she was going to step up a little bit more. Izanami goes down, that's huge. She's chunking, and we miss too many basics, and we drop another kill. We get the root onto the Jing Chen. We're going to keep landing basics onto him. That's his ultimate. We're going to go ahead and clean up this tower. Fire our two. Loki is here. He's able to clean up the Kali. Luckily, he does not want to engage on us. And if he did, we have tier 1 of Breastplate of Valor. That 20 physical protections for 600 gold. Ridiculous. So, the way the math works on protections, if I'm not mistaken... It is a hundred divided by a hundred plus X, where X is your protections. We will succeed with or without them. So if we have twenty, it's a hundred divided by a hundred and twenty, which is five sixth. So we're taking five sixth of the damage instead of the full one hundred percent. Instead of the six sixth. You have their attention. That makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Looks like they're going to be pushing that right tower. There is a minion wave pretty far up in left. We don't have eyes on Izanami. She could be pushing the Phoenix. Getting eyes on Izanami, I think, would be very comforting. Nope, she's over and left. Time to back. Bacchus is closing in as soon as we get vision on her. And she's in this lane that could ult her and Bacchus could clean her up. But it does look like she stepped out of this lane. At least two people over and right. Three people, four people. Jiang Chen's about to ult. We're gonna use our beads. We fire our one off. Bok is able to get the pick onto the Loki. We're gonna kinda chase down this chalk. We're gonna backflip to get closer to him. Fire two. He dashes to his hammer. We get the root, we get some damage, and we're able to clean up the chalk. We just won that team fight. Zhing is backing up. We don't know where Izanami is. I think it's time to make a fire giant play. We have two hunters. We should be able to melt this. We are able to secure the fire giant. Oh, and on one of our backs, we picked up Deathbringer. We ult the Izanami. Hopefully our team can close in on her and get the pick. That was more of a setup ult than a get the pick ult. Jing uses his ult. Oh, he's still chasing the Izanami. Bacchus is able to get the pick on the Izanami. I think that's absolutely worth the trade. 
Izanami is the problem child on the enemy team that we need to worry about. We are going to go ahead and pick up Deathbringer. Deathbringer is going to provide us 50 physical power, 25% critical strike chance. It has a passive that critical strike bonus damage is increased by 30%. We're going to go ahead and life seal off some of these camps. Oh, what a turnaround. We get one tank. We get a second tank. That's a full deicide. We should be able to get a Phoenix right here. We're going to go ahead and tank the tower. Now that we've gotten the tower and we're about to get this Phoenix, the game is wide open for us to take. We're gonna go ahead and secure the Pyromancer, try to get everyone on our team to back and then push together as a unit. We are able to secure the Pyromancer. We go ahead and we sell our tier one of Breastplate of Valor and we're gonna go ahead and pick up Oboe. Odysseus's bow is going to provide us 40% increased attack speed, and it has a passive that every fourth basic attack is going to trigger chain lightning, damaging up to four enemies for 15 plus 60% of your basic attack power. Well, our basic attack power can get pretty high if we're critting. This item is also going to severely increase our attack speed and our damage output while also not putting us over the cap. We do have our ultimate. We're gonna go ahead and charge it up. Just try to set up this Kali. That's our main objective right now. We fire one and we're able to get the pick onto the Izanami. Since we hit her with the ultimate, she probably thought we were on the other side of the map. However, we were right there. We're gonna go ahead and just tank this tower for a little bit. Bit of a team fight going on in the left jungle right next to us. One by one. That's another down, and the enemy team surrenders. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.